Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are back with another jailbreak tutorial recorded at 12.41 a.m. The time on this MacBook is correct. I am being kind of nocturnal this weekend. Oh well, I'll be fine. So, uh, I'm doing, finally, a tutorial for the MC model iPod Touch 2nd Gen. Now what does that mean? I'm sure a lot of people don't understand that, and it creates a lot of confusion, mainly surrounding my previous iOS 4 tutorial, which, which I never explained in the video because when I recorded it, I demoed with an iPhone 3G and uh, just assumed it would work on all iPod Touch 2nd gens until someone corrected me, and then I updated the title to specify iPod Touch 2G MB. Now what does that MB mean? Well. For that, I have another iPod Touch 2nd Gen here. Now, these are both 2nd Gen iPod Touches, 8 gigabyte models, except that the one on the left here is an MB, and the one on the right is an MC. Now, what does that mean? Well, they're two separate minor revisions. They are effectively the same, except that the MC model came later. Um, and I'll tell you in a minute how to tell yours apart. Now. The reason why the MC model exists is because they kept the second gen iPod Touch around when the third gen came out, just as a cheap model, only available in 8 gigabytes. And um, it had like some minor firmware update that doesn't matter at all except when you go to jailbreak it, where Red Snow, the tool I used in that video, doesn't support it. So half the pe so while most iPod Touch second gens are the earlier MB model, those few people that had an MC were kind of screwed and just got a vague message saying the device isn't supported. And I'm sorry about that because I did not know at the time and there isn't really a good way to explain it with an updated title, but this is the best I can do, I guess. I'll re-record that one eventually, but it still gets the job done for now. So then, how do you tell yours apart? First of all, if your second gen touch isn't an eight gigabyte model, it's an MB model. The MC model only came in eight gigs. If you have an eight, an eight gig model, like both of these are, oops, that's been on the whole time. Um, the way you tell them apart is by either checking the model number. Uh, the MB models model number will start with MB and the MC models will start with MC. You can check this in settings. General, about, and you can see here that this one starts with MC, and this one's battery is dead, but it would start with MB. The easiest way though is to just check the back if you have an eight gig model. If your text here is bigger, as you can see, you have an MB model. If it's smaller, you have an MC model. So anyway, those are the three ways to tell them apart. Is it an eight gig model? If no, MB. If yes, it could be either. And then check either the tech, the capacity text on the back or the model number and settings. Anyway, so um, we're gonna be using a different jailbreak tool today. So I used Red Snow in my earlier tutorial, which supports the MB model, but not the revised MC model. Now. The tool we'll be using for the MC model is called Green Poison. Here it is. So, um, this works on all models of iPod Touch 2nd Gen and the iPhone 3G and presumably all other um, iOS 4.2.1 devices, although I haven't verified this. So then you may be asking, why is this just the iPod Touch 2 GMC tutorial and not just a revised iOS 4 tutorial? Well, because of one caveat that comes with using Green Poison over Red Snow. It puts a custom boot logo in place and there doesn't seem to be a way to disable it, at least not one that I know of. I don't like the custom boot logo and so I'm assuming most people would prefer not to have it. So, there. <laughs> That's the only reason. This will work on all other models, but uh, yeah. I'll explain that well. So, open, so, here's your requirements to running the tool. Unfortunately, if your computer is running Windows 10 or 11, first of all, this is a Windows tutorial. Um, uh, if you have a Mac, 
it's more complicated. You need an old version of Mac OS and an old version of iTunes, and it just, it gets messy. So I'm most people are on Windows. I'm sure someone's made a Mac tutorial. That's not what I do. Um, and yes, by the way, yes, this is a MacBook Pro running Windows. I get a surprising amount of comments about that. I've just found these to be really great Windows machines as well. So I. This is just my favorite Windows 7 computer, as well as one of my favorite Macs. So, I have it dual booted. So, there's your explanation on why that is. Anyway, um, if you're on Windows 10 or 11, this won't work, because Microsoft broke something driver-related. There is some complicated method I have to ch try to test at some point to get, like, one version of Red Snow to work on Windows 10, but... For the most part, and since this isn't Red Snow, you're going to need Windows 8.1 or older. So drag out that old laptop or old desktop. If you don't have one, then you can run Windows 7 in a virtual machine. I won't be going into that much here. Just look up a tutorial to run Windows 7 in a virtual machine. There are plenty out there. Um, for either VirtualBox or VMware, those are the two types of software. Um, just note that either will work for this, uh, for jailbreaking, but if you're running a VirtualBox VM, you'll need the optional expansion pack, which includes an improved USB driver, which is required. Anyway, uh, on top of that, once you've got a supported operating system, you'll also need an older version of iTunes. Uh, I specifically use 11.0.5.5, which I'll leave a link to in the description. It works pretty much for all these old tools. They rely on iTunes for drivers and newer versions don't work with the old tools. So that's why you need that. If you already have a newer version of iTunes installed, go to your control panel, programs, uninstall, and uninstall all software by Apple Inc. That includes anything. Unless you're running a bootcamped Mac like I am too, don't uninstall your bootcamp drivers. But if you're running on just a regular old PC, everything Apple, if you're running on a bootcamp to Mac, everything Apple except the bootcamp drivers. Um, but yeah, that includes Bonjour, mobile device support, especially application support, and iTunes itself. Then reinstall iTunes using the older version installer linked in the description, which is a direct download from Apple's servers. Now, with all of that explanation, which is long but is necessary to avoid comments about it not working because they didn't listen to this, because it's all important stuff. I, I have to try my best to explain it. Um, we are finally ready to actually start. So, get your device, which this one's cleanly restored on iOS 4.2.1. Plug it in using a known good 30 pin cable to a known good USB port. And then open up your the tool, Green Poison RC6, which is linked in the description as well. And then it'll pop up this message about if you're jailbreaking an Apple TV. We are not jailbreaking an Apple TV. At least I don't believe this is an Apple TV. So hit no. And then please power off your device and connect it to begin. So now we're going to go through the instructions on how to enter DFU mode, which is device firmware update mode. It's like one level lower than recovery mode, and it's necessary to get increased privileges required to jailbreak. Anyway, so I'd leave it plugged in while before you turn it off, unlike what it says there, to power off first, just because it might st start booting if you do that. When you're ready, just hit prepare to jailbreak. And then follow the instructions on screen. There we go. It's entered DFU mode because it got connected. Now I'll find this happens a lot where it'll search Windows Update for the driver and get stuck forever. Click on your driver window down here and then skip. For me on this computer, it still just gets stuck here either way. Um, it's gonna fail because it's waiting for the driver to install. So just wait a while for this to happen. It can take minutes sometimes. Windows 7 just seems to be really finicky about this. Um, so just, oh, there we go. 
and there it did. So now we can try again, and it should detect it right away. There it goes. Now you can just hit jailbreak. Now at this point, it'll start the process. If you get another installing driver software down here, click it and skip searching Windows Update. Make sure to do that. At this point, this is right, away, right, right around where it's gonna fail if you're running on Windows 10, where it'll just get stuck at this white screen. As long as you're not running it on Windows 10 or 11 and you're running it on Windows 8.1 or earlier, that will not get stuck there. And there we go, just like that, jailbreak complete, green poison shows up on screen there and the rest of the process all takes place on your device. Now we're gonna get that verbose boot. Oh, that's funny, Apple M2, Scalar, blah, blah, blah. Of course, that has nothing to do with the M2 chip, but it's funny how that ended up becoming a thing years later. <laughs> You recognize these messages if you've ever seen an ancient version of OS X boot up. And there is that custom boot logo. There might be a way to uninstall this in Cydia. There probably is, but um, I'll check on that. All right. We're right about finished here. There we go. At this point, you'll see one of the most shocking things about this jailbreak, which is this little app here called Loader. This is the app you have to enter into to uh, actually install Cydia, and I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, so that's not gonna work. What makes it so shocking is that this is a decade-old jailbreak, and somehow the server for this is still online. I have no idea how or why they've kept it up, but thank you for keeping it up. Otherwise, this would not work. And these devices would sort of be screwed. I really hate server-reliant elements like this, because at some point that server is gonna go down. But for now, it still works. And it can download, so yeah. There we go. Um, ah, there we go. It's gonna respring there. Or maybe that might have actually been a full reboot. I think it was. But, yeah. And there's that boot logo again. And there's Cydia. So just wait for this to finish. And then you're gonna have to go in there and update all your sources and do all that stuff, and yeah. <laughs> oh, is it developer here? Just because I don't like getting things hidden from me, but it really doesn't matter. Now what I'm curious about is if that boot logo can be removed. I'm not seeing any tweaks related to it. There might be a way to change it in the file system, but yeah, whatever. As you'll see here, you really want to do your updates because not only is this old version of Cydia very slow, but it isn't supported anymore. So there we go, reloading data. And there we go. Make sure to hit complete upgrade because we want everything upgraded. Confirm. And there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Reboot. <laughs> all right, so at that point, Cydia should be all up to date and working. You want to remove the uh, ultra snow source because it's just going to cause your, re your data reloading to take longer because it uh, isn't online anymore. But there is one more thing I want to show just here at the end. I do this in all my videos. Nowadays on these old devices, which is uh, there is a certain uh, web certificate that expired like last year, 2021. And uh, it might cause some certain pages and possibly Cydia sources to not work. 
Um, so I'm just going to show you how to fix that real quick. This is optional, but if you're having issues with any websites or um, Cydia sources, this could be a good place to start. So um, go to Cydia in your uh, web browser, cydia.invoxyplaygames.uk as spelled. Uh, slash certificates. Now at this point, it'll give you this option for ISRG root X1CA from Let's Encrypt. This is the right one. It gives a warning here about uh, trusting certificates from random websites. Um, that's the actual Let's Encrypt.org page. Um, and it gives some useful advice about that. But uh, the reason why you go to this page is because the Let's Encrypt site will not load on like any Safari browser pre like iOS 11. So that's why this page exists to allow older devices to download the new profile. Um, the person who made this site is a trusted developer, same person who developed Tube Fixer, which allows the built in YouTube app to work. Uh, so just, it's a trusted thing. So just click on it, and then it'll bring you to install profile, hit install, hit install again, and now you're good. Anyway, that's it. Your jail broke it now. And there we go, all up and running. All right, hopefully you can see my face all right now. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you have any issues, Leave a comment down below, but first I'd recommend you go rewatch the intro of the video and all the steps to take to get prepared because you might have just missed something there. Um, so check that first, and if you're still having issues, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you pretty quick. Um, I'll leave links to my other jailbreak tutorials in the description, so if you have another device, uh, it'll be right there. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'll see everyone next time. Have a good day or night. I'm out. MC, this is an MB on the left in the city. Ow! Crap! Oh no! Ah, oh, nuts! <laughs> Oops.